Hey there, this is Tanner Steed. Uh, welcome to part two of the Custom Commission Portrait Challenge. I'm here with Ben Walling and Christian Mora. Also, make sure to like this video and subscribe to my channel. So if you didn't catch the first video, you can click right here to check the initial video for the portrait challenge. All right, let's get started. How's the critique formulated? We would have two parts to the critique. We do more of an objective part of the critique, and uh, that would be more like proportions, uh, values, and the second part will be more subjective, which is composition and edges and things in that nature. Right. One's more like rudimentary, and then one is more, I guess, free and your own personal opinion. Right. And the point of this is to grow. I want to be nice, so you can share uh, a comment, a compliment, whatever, but definitely try to push each other so then we're all growing in this process. So, my intention with this piece is to separate the lights from darks in a way that reads to me. Sometimes when I do a sketch, it's very intuitive and not so much like academically focused. Whereas with this piece, I wanted to focus on being as accurate as possible while still having a loose interpretation. Like, so can I ask, did you start out with the Loomis method? So I kind of blend the aspects of the Riley method I like that work for me with aspects of the Loomis method. Could you point something out on your portrait where you were thinking in terms of the Riley method? The bottom of the nose, the bottom two third or the bottom third of the face, mm -hmm. how to round out the mouth because it has that the Riley method has this very nice oh, yeah. mapped right. out mm -hmm. system. So the other part of the Riley method that I find really helpful is the line from the the, the eye leading to the top of the ear. There's a line that uh, crosses over the cheekbone into the corner of the mouth. Separating the side plane from the front. Right, yeah. that I find very helpful for that cheekbone to get make it strong and stand out. Nice. You have a lot of hair on your face <laughs> and around your face, which is fun because then you can get loose. One thing that you did do very well is you interpreted all of this side of the head as being the side plane. Right. Whereas sometimes it gets really confusing with hair because it's sticking out in so many directions that you may want to group it with like the front plane, but it's obvious. You almost have this const consistent core shadow going all the way separating the lights from the darks. And that gives that cubic okay. faceted structure and that, that looks good. I'm glad you brought that up because one thing I struggle with that I know I should get critiqued for in this piece is the fact that my a lot of this is very improvised, which might confuse me later. And I already know that it's probably going to confuse me later because I see it, but it's not necessarily what would make the, the piece visually more rep like representative of your figure. Okay, so to start out with an objective critique of you know basic shadow and light and proportions and measurement. I think in terms of likeness, like I have a sense that maybe the eyes and the nose and the mouth are on different perspective planes. That's... So these should all track in the same direction. You've got a nostril down there and then the mouth like this and the mustache like that. So the eyes should do the same thing. Okay. If we were to draw lines off into infinity, they would all vanish, or they're supposed to vanish at the same spot, because it's linear perspective. Um, they, they should all be about at the horizon line, and they all go to the same vanishing point. But if we were to send these lines off, one would go up, these would probably go to the same spot, probably should be shifted down. Okay, moving on to the subjective point of view. Um, as in style choices, position of the composition. I love the size of my head on, like we're planning on doing a nine by 12 painting and you've made my head really large. It, it's gonna fit the space well. I like that 
it's a little heavy on the right side and then the left side has some space to breathe mm -hmm. which is nice and i'm looking off the canvas and yeah the, the weight is more on the right mm -hmm. I, I yeah which is good as I if i were too close to the left and i were looking off it would be unbalanced i think that's the similar thing that i was talking about earlier where i kind of i want to leave myself room to improvise later on <laughs> Okay. The way I approach this is just measuring as close as I could. Um, you know, I did the line, I actually used the uh, Loomis circle and uh, jaw. Awesome. Dude, I mean, immediately I see like the cross hatching, and it makes me so happy. For some reason, it reminds me of either Zorn or like late late Van Gogh, like his best self-portraits, that is what this reminds me of. The texture in his beard is so cool. It looks like I'm looking in the mirror, it's insane. Yeah, I mean, you definitely got the likeness. One of the things that I see uh, where it messed up is the size of the eyes are just a little bit big. As for an objective critique, um, yeah, I think the eye on the right feels a little, two things, it either feels a little too big, or maybe the proportion is correct, but because the value is a bit lighter, uh, like the, the actual lids are lighter than the one on the left, it may actually give the illusion that it's too big. Maybe it is the right size, but by pushing down that value, it might, you know, make it less, you know, have less contrast and therefore less impact. Good point, yeah. And then... I think maybe you restricted your lights a bit much in terms of... Um, the darks really take over the piece in a lot of, like, there's so much dark value that the, I think the light kind of... Yeah, it is pretty dark though. Like, yeah. picture, especially this whole side where you can't see anything. All of this. Yeah, but I like insane. that. I like yeah, that. I love it. Yeah, like and that just, gets into the subjective I uh, think critique. Super loose edges and do whatever totally. I want. <laughs> right. Yeah, I love those lost edges. Um, and stylistically, like it's super scratchy in a good way. Like it gives texture. And one thing I noticed immediately is that um, when I first look at this. I immediately see the beard, the t well the eyes first, I look at the eyes first, which is good, and then I look at the beard next, and then I look at the background, I'm bouncing all over the place, um, which is good for like, you know, something being more interesting than just portrait done, you know what I mean? There's m many things I didn't expect, like, I, yeah, I look at the eyes, I look at the awesome texture here and then back into the background and then I'm like wait where does his neck start where does it stop mm -hmm. that's super interesting to me I will say I don't look down here which I think is good yeah, I think that's because the too. point of the painting is here and now I'm just noticing that you added the logo that's yeah. so cool <laughs> Does the head circle, right, if the circle starts just below the middle, or the lower third, if this is the circle, is it too small in relation to the shoulders uh, and the neck, right? Like, either are the shoulders too wide or is the head too small? I'm not entirely sure. It's just been working out. I yeah. don't get that body <laughs> exercise. I noticed one objective critique. I think this value is too too dark. Um, yeah, I would soften that. You still need the core shadow there, right? But I, two things: the core shadow could like continue down the neck to describe the forms a bit more, and it should either be lighter or the shadow should be darker. But I I, I would make it lighter because the beard should be darker than that. It looks entirely like me. That's yeah, that's so crazy. <laughs> Wow, nice work, man. Because this 
I was kind of framing this as a portrait commission challenge. I was pretending that likeness was extremely important. And so I definitely, I know this, I may have gone a little overboard on the measuring. I made certain, well, I tried as hard as I possibly could to make it look like you. Um, there are some things that I recognize are a little off, but I tried to make it look as close to you as possible. Um, so I went about identifying every, pretty much every single facet of your face initially with a really, really hard pencil. So it was like super light and I could see every single change of plane, even along the sides of your cheek and throughout your head. After doing that, I decided that I needed to not say every single facet or not define every single facet and simplify by grouping values in the shadows, like on the side of the cheek, like that whole side plane, and then along the nose too. Um, Cause there's, there's a lot of intricate facets and things going on in there. Um, and then also um, I had that you, there is a lot going on in your hair as well. And so I wanted to give the illusion of texture of like individual hairs, but not identify too much in there to distract you from your face. Yeah, I tried to group it into maybe five values total. It's difficult to find things to comment on. The ear, to me, looks a bit large, and I think, I don't know if there's enough information in the ear in terms of, can you turn your head sideways for a second? <laughs> Do you see the large swooping Y shape going on there? Yes. I, it may be missing from your piece, and the reason that that's sort of academic and not subjective is just because that is a uniform and a part of the structure. ear that totally. should be represented. If you look close enough, it's there. I tried to push it back so it wouldn't be distracting from the face. For sure. It's there, but maybe, yeah, maybe you're, maybe you're right. It should be a little bit more defined. I can just see the, and it, it, you kept it very loose and I can see that for sure, but I think, I think the looseness of it does make the ear look a little bit bigger than it is in Chris's actual head. Okay. You know what I mean? I don't have any criticism. It's, it's, it's really you have well done. Criticisms. <laughs> I like your terminators uh, showing the, you know, the, the movement of the head, the plane. Wait, can you plane. can you describe what a terminator is? The, the core shadow. Okay. Where it's the drop off from light to dark. Okay. Yeah. There's a point where the light, <laughs> uh, rather than. Um, well, there's a point where it's not being, light is not being reflected into the shadow and light is not hitting it directly. So there's a core shadow that runs along every form, every shadow. I see. It's sometimes it's more obvious, sometimes it's less obvious. Uh, when you're drawing just a simple sphere, you'll, one part of the shadow is called the core shadow. Right. It's kind of like a rubber band around it. And so the rubber band idea is like going down this, there. Sure. And it was much but more I, obvious I, towards I see the how top. It's, yeah, I see how it's much more pronounced up there, I mean, the nose too. You did a good job of sculpting the eye in a way that looks, like, you can identify the ball of the eye. It looks like a sphere. Awesome. That, that's very good. And creating, like, three planes on top of the eyelid, and then two underneath, or, yeah. Mm, yeah. Um, to make it look three-dimensional, just like that. Geom like simplify it, simplifying it geometrically. Yeah, no, overall it's amazing. Your edges are on point. Yeah, your attention to detail is immaculate. It's ridiculous. <sighs> All right, so part one is done. We have fully rendered graphite drawings. Uh, we're going to be using these as a reference to help us compose and create a value structure in the next step. So the next step is going to be a grisaille painting. So we're just using limited colors. We're using titanium white, ivory black, and raw umber. And the reason why it isn't just black and white is because now we can think about kind of a temperature shift uh, using the brown as our warm and then black as the cool. This is going to act as the underpainting uh, underneath the fully colored painting that we'll do in part three.
So hope you enjoyed. Make sure you uh, like this video and subscribe and make sure to ring the bell and I'll see you in the next one.